Do you know why bicycles need kickstands? Because they are too tired. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 crime thriller film called Nightmare Alley. The film opens in 1939 with a man named Stan Carlyle concealing a body inside an old hut in a secluded area, and then sets it ablaze. He roams the rural landscape until he encounters a traveling fair and decides to explore it. Among various attractions, Stan is drawn to two, Molly, a charming woman who can withstand electric shocks, and the geek, a wild man who publicly devours a live chicken. The fair's proprietors, Bruno and Clem, offer Stan employment, which he accepts. He starts journeying with them, handling assorted tasks like selling merchandise, aiding in tent setups and takedowns, and recapturing the geek when he flees his enclosure. Initially, Stan hits the geek in self-defense, but gradually begins to empathize with him, even sharing a cigarette one evening. Eventually, the fair stops near Xena and Pete's residence, a duo formerly known as mentalists. They showcase their act at the fair, using secret signals and the art of cold reading, which involves analyzing someone's physical gestures, attire, and education level to create the illusion of mind reading. Their secret signals are documented in a small manual. With Pete battling alcoholism, Xena and Stan covertly collaborate when he's preoccupied. Stan convinces the couple to teach him their skills, practicing with them and spending his free time with Molly. He devises a plan to enhance her act, which she loves, leading them to grow very close. Bruno, feeling protective of Molly since her father passed, warns Stan to take care of her. Stan promises not to harm her and proposes that they start their own show in the city. They nearly share a kiss, but Molly hurries off. One night, the geek suffers a bad head injury. When his fever persists, Clem and Stan take him to a town and leave him at a shelter for the homeless after a short drive. During a meal, Clem shares his method of recruiting geeks. He finds desperate drug addicts in back alleys and lures them with kind words. After their practice, Pete implores Stan to fetch him a bottle of sugarcane liquor from Clem's stash, to which Stan agrees. While attempting to study Pete's secret codebook as Pete sleeps, Pete awakens and reclaims it, warning that misuse of the book can lead someone to believe they truly have supernatural abilities, which can result in harm to others. The next morning, Xena finds Pete deceased. Several days later, law enforcement arrives to close the carnival for unlawful activities. When officers come to apprehend Molly for indecent acts, Stan intervenes, activating the electricity and repelling the officers, claiming he saved their lives. He then feigns communication with the sheriff's late mother, who pleads for leniency towards the hard-working carnival crew. The sheriff is convinced and leaves with his deputies, sparing the carnival. Molly, impressed by Stan's quick wit, agrees to elope with him. However, Bruno confronts them, assaulting Stan after Molly confesses she's still a virgin. Thankfully, Molly intervenes, declaring her love for Stan and her intention to depart with him. Stan bids farewell to Xena, who allows him to keep Pete's book as he has earned it. Two years on, Stan and Molly run a successful psychic act for Buffalo's Affluent, where Stan, blindfolded, discerns people's assets based on Molly's verbal cues. Yet, Stan remains tormented by memories of the old cabin where he buried his father. During one show, a sophisticated woman named Lilith challenges Stan to identify the contents of her bag without Molly's verbal assistance, aware of their secret code. Stan relies solely on his cold reading skills to deduce there's a firearm in Lilith's bag, embarrassing her publicly by asserting her lack of control. He then shifts his focus to Judge Kimball, feigning a connection with his late son. Post-performance in the dressing room, Molly reprimands Stan for unnerving Kimball, recalling Pete's warning against such spook shows. She convinces him to offer Kimball some truth and closure, especially since Kimball wishes to meet them before their departure. During their eventual encounter, Kimball proposes a significant sum for a private session at his home with his wife, leading Stan to break his promise to Molly by accepting the offer. Concurrently, Lilith approaches Stan, introducing herself as a psychologist and leaving her card. The following day, Stan visits her office, discovering she records all her therapy sessions, including those with Kimball. Stan reveals his use of tricks in his act and his methods, piquing Lilith's interest due to the psychological aspects of his cold reading. 
In exchange for insight into Kimball's life, Lilith agrees to act as Stan's therapist. Lilith shares details about Kimball's deceased son and begins probing Stan, challenging his fear of alcohol and suggesting he might have been responsible for Pete's demise, a man Stan viewed as a more admirable father figure compared to his real, abusive alcoholic father. Meanwhile, Stan and Molly's relationship wanes. Molly, contacting Bruno to inquire about old friends, confesses her longing for them and breaks down crying. Some former carnival colleagues visit, and during a dinner, Xena uses tarot cards to predict Stan's future, cautioning him about the risks of conducting the ghost show. Despite Molly's objections, Stan proceeds with the ghost show for the Kimballs, achieving success thanks to the information provided by Lilith. Stan reassures Kimball's wife that she and her son will eventually reconcile. Following the performance, Stan visits Lilith to offer her half of his earnings, which she refuses. However, she agrees to keep the money in her safe to hide it from Molly. He also mentions that Kimball is so taken with his performance that he has arranged a private session for a friend. Lilith promises to find out more during her next session with Kimball. Lilith later calls Stan with information about Kimball's friend, a former patient of hers, described as unpredictable, dangerous, and influential. Despite the risks, Stan is eager to proceed with the show, so Lilith shares what little she knows. At the event, Stan is taken to a lavish venue and searched by a bodyguard, Anderson, before meeting Kimball's friend, Grindle. Instead of a typical meeting place, Stan finds himself in a corridor, where Grindle, a very private individual, insists on using a lie detector. During the test, Stan, fearing exposure, abruptly claims to be in contact with the spirit of a woman named Dory, whom Grindle forced into a miscarriage. The lie detector yields inconclusive results, leaving the staff skeptical, but Grindle is convinced of Stan's authenticity, as he couldn't have known about Dory. Afterwards, Stan recounts the experience to Lilith, mentioning Grindle's interest in more sessions. Lilith refuses to share further information, fearing legal repercussions as she was the only one aware of the miscarriage. While Lilith is away, Stan takes an impression of her keys. Upon her return, she shows him a scar on her abdomen as a reminder of the risks involved in dealing with powerful individuals. Ignoring the caution, their affair begins with a kiss on her scar. Stan later sneaks into Lilith's office, using a duplicate key to listen to her recordings about Grindle. He also bribes a health department worker for access to items found on Dory after her death, including a photo of Dory that bears a resemblance to Molly. During their next meeting, Stan successfully uses the newfound information to impress Grindle, but the situation gets complicated when Grindle asks for a physical manifestation of Dory's ghost. Stan hesitates, suggesting he needs to be morally pure to achieve this, but Grindle bribes him to make it happen. Stan accepts the money and goes to Lilith's safe, where she eventually convinces him to start drinking. Stan attempts to get Molly to impersonate Dory, but she refuses. Anderson comes to escort Stan and warns him about causing any trouble, expressing his deep loyalty to Grindle. At the meeting, Grindle becomes furious when Stan resorts to his usual tactics. Under threat, Stan agrees to produce a physical appearance of Dory. Meanwhile, Kimball's wife remains haunted by Stan's message about reuniting with her son. In a tragic turn, she uses a gun to end her and her husband's lives, hoping to reunite with their son in the afterlife. Faced with no other choice, Stan convinces Molly to act as Dory to quickly wrap things up. While setting up, Molly goes through the pictures of Dory in Stan's notebook to mimic her appearance, but is shocked to find sketches of Lilith, revealing Stan's affair. Deciding to leave, Molly writes a farewell letter to Stan. He chases her to the train station, reeking of alcohol and making intense remarks, but manages to convince her to participate in the performance, promising it will be their last together. At night, they set up the scene in Dory's garden. Stan sends Anderson inside for privacy and starts the seance. Grendel, believing it might help him connect with Dory, confesses his past wrongdoings, including harming many women. Molly, dressed as Dory and covered in fake blood, appears at the end of the garden. However, their plan falls apart when Grindle, instead of staying back to pray as expected, rushes towards Molly and embraces her, only to realize she's not Dory. 
Furious, Grindel assaults Molly and calls for Anderson, who's inside listening to the radio and learns about the Kimball's deaths. Stan quiets Grindel by hitting him until he's lifeless, then flees with Molly in the car as Anderson comes out and starts firing at them. Anderson quickly catches up, but Stan rams into him twice with the car before speeding off. They park in an alley where Stan breaks the car's windows to make it look like it was robbed. Molly, terrified by Stan's unfamiliar behavior, strikes him and leaves. Stan next visits Lilith to retrieve his money and leave the city. She gets the cash ready for him, and after consuming a lot of alcohol, he tries to depart, but she seduces him into staying, declaring her love. However, when she activates a recorder, Stan becomes wary. Dropping the bag of money, he discovers it's filled with mere one-dollar bills. Betrayed and shocked, he confronts Lilith, who denies any wrongdoing and disparages him for his greed. In a heated moment, she shoots at him, but only grazes his head. Stan, injured, struggles with her as she calls for security. Hearing guards approaching, he escapes and heads to a train station, where he hides in a carriage behind chicken cages. As the train starts, he reminisces about the day he left his father to die of cold, revealing a deep resentment towards him. Wandering aimlessly, Stan occasionally joins other drifters. One night, reading a newspaper ad about Xena's new act, he trades his father's watch for beer. Deciding to look for work at a nearby carnival, he finds his mentalist skills outdated. The carnival manager, however, offers him a job as a geek along with a drink. Stan, resigned to his fate, accepts the role, acknowledging it's what he was meant for, and breaks down in laughter. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.